And before starting off, I want you to understand the architecture behind this. This is really very important. First, we need to host our static website on AWS S3. This will be your first step. In order to have our own custom domain, we need to create our own public hosted zone and add the DNS servers to our custom domain server settings, which could be Hostinger or GoDaddy or any other site that you purchase your domain. Next, we'll create our SSL TLS certificate and add the CNAME record on the Route 53 to validate the certificate so that it gets issued. For our final step, we'll create our CDN using CloudFront distribution and update the A record to point to the CDN instead of the S3 bucket endpoint. And finally, we'll have our website hosted on AWS with SSL enabled or verified and thus making it secure. This will be our first step, which will help us use our custom domain instead of S3 bucket endpoint URL. Next phase will help us with the certificate generation. And the last step will help us host our website with HTTPS redirection. So our first step is to host our static website on S3 bucket. So let's do that. So first things first, we need to set up our S3 bucket. So this is just a fancy name for the place where we, where our website files will be stored. So remember your bucket's name should be the same as the website name that you want. So let's see how it can be done. So the first step for us is to create the S3 bucket. So here, once you go to the search bar, once you log into the management console, you can go to the search bar and type S3. And on the drop down, you will see S3 here. So when you click on this, you will come to this page. So this is the dashboard. And if you want to create a bucket, just click on create bucket here. And now you have to make sure that the name of the bucket is the same as your domain that you want to have. So for now, for I just want to have it like pytholic.cloud. And I'll tell you why exactly I'm saying this, because this is the uh, domain that I want it to be called as. And here, uh, I don't have to change any settings. My AWS region is AP South 1, so that's fine. And here, I have disabled the ACLs. Don't worry about this. Here, what you need to do is block public access setting for this bucket. So we need to disable this. We need public access. And here you can see there is a warning given by AWS that turning off block all public access might result in this bucket and its objects within becoming public. So we have to understand that yes, we acknowledge that the current setting might result in this bucket and the objects within becoming public. So we understand that we have to mark it as check. Now you don't want to have a bucket versioning because this is just a trial. So if you have any requirement regarding this, you can enable it. But for now, I'll not do this. And here as well, bucket key using an S3 bucket key for SSC reduces encryption cost by lowering calls to AWS KMS. So I'll just disable it. I don't need it right now. But if you want it, you can have it as well. So these are our basic settings configuration that we want to have. So just now click on create bucket. So once you click on create bucket, it will validate whether the name is allowed or not and whether it is available to us or not. Yes, pytholic.cloud is available. And the next thing for us is to click on this particular bucket name and upload the files that we want. So this is my website that I want to be hosted. And this is the same code that I'll be using. And I'll share this code as well on the GitHub link that will provide in the description so that you can also try it. So this is just a basic bootstrap template that I have customized for my own liking. And this is the one that I'm going to host. So here we have all the files. So I'll just drag them and or I can just do a control A and I'll just drag it and I'll upload it to this location. And now this is the upload information. So it will list out all the files that you have within that particular folder structure. And it will say that, yes, the destination is S3 colon double slash pytholic dot cloud. That is the destination. And here you have permissions and properties that you can set, but I'm not going to do that. So because I don't have any requirements for setting storage classes right now, so I'll not do that and just click on upload. So now the upload process will start here. You can see the number of files that have succeeded in uploading. And here you will see if any of the files have failed. Okay, that's great. The file upload is successful. So we can just close it. So now the next important thing for us is to make this a static website. So in order to do that, we need to just go to properties. Here you can see 
we have settings for bucket versioning tags, default encryption. You have to just go down. You will have a setting for static website hosting. And there is an edit button here. You just need to click on that. And here you have the option to enable it. So use this bucket to host a website or redirect requests. So just click on this to enable it. So for now, the hosting type is host a static website. You can also click on this and redirect any other website also using this particular name. But for us, we just want to host a static website using the content that we have. So just click on this host a static website. And here you need to provide the index.html file name. And remember, most of the people have this problem that they don't have an index.html and they provide it here based on the video tutorial that they see and they face the problem that they're not able to view the website. So that's a very big problem. So make sure that your folder structure, I'll just show you once again here. See, the object already has an index.html here. So that is my starting page. So that is why I'm giving here. So this is my default home page. And I don't have any redirection rules and I don't have any error.html, so I'm not going to provide it. So that's an optional parameter. But index.html is important because that will act as our default page or home page. Now, just click on save changes. So now that we have set this property to use the content as the static website hosting. So you might assume that if you click on this, you will be able to see this. But no, there is one more important setting that we have to do. So click on this again, edit, and you can see. So there is a very important notice here for your customers to access content at the website endpoint. You must make all your content publicly readable. So to do so, you can edit the S3 block public access setting for the website or the bucket. For more information, see this. So if you go here in this documentation, there is a setting. You just need to click on setting permissions for website access. So here, if you go down, add a bucket policy. This is a step two. We have already done this, so we don't need to do this. In the starting itself, when I created the bucket, I disabled this. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this. I'll just copy this and I'll go to my bucket settings again setting up the bucket policy we need to go to permissions so just go to permissions here here you can see the option for bucket policy and the edit button here just click on this and paste the content that we copied from the documentation here you have the bucket arn copy this and just replace it with the one that you had okay so that's it no errors nothing just save the changes now come back to properties again Go down. This is your endpoint for your website. So just click on this. You should see the website hosted. Yes. So if you want, I can just copy this and open it in a in another browser as well for you to see that it works. It works. So now, as you can see, we have hosted it on pythology.cloud.s3-website.apsouth1.amazonaws.com. So there's a very long website name. Most of you, what you want is only the website endpoint to be pythology.cloud or the domain name that you want. So for this, what we have to do is we need to purchase a domain itself. So in order to do that, that is a step three where we will actually have to go and purchase a domain. So as I have already mentioned that pythology.cloud is the domain that I want this website to be called. So I will go ahead and purchase the pythology.cloud, but I have already done that. So if I go to pythology.cloud, I already have a website here. So I already purchased this domain using Hostinger, but you can choose any other domain registration service that you want and purchase your own domain. So pythology.cloud is something that I purchased a few days back just to showcase this particular demo so that you understand this because I have been getting a lot of requests that my previous demo that I had did not showcase this part that how can I have a custom domain in place so i just wanted to show that as well and if you also want to purchase your domain then you can go to any other website like godaddy.com or hostinger.com you can just type hostinger and this website will pop up and you can just click on domain here and you can search the domain name that you want and this name should match the one that you have created the bucket with so the bucket name and this domain name should match let's suppose i want to purchase a domain called s3 static 
so i'll just search for this so if you can see all these all these s3 static.com dot online dot io everything is available for us so i can just choose one of them let's suppose i want to have s3 static.com which is around 700 rupees per year so i can purchase this by just clicking on add to cart here i can make the payment i can create an account if i don't have it or i can log in with google or facebook and i can just make the payment and i will be getting that domain name for myself so that is fine for us the domain registration part is done i have already purchased a hosting service so i don't need to host my websites on the s3 bucket it is just to show you like how you can do it and once you have purchased the domain that is when we will go to the next step and if you are doing this with me then and if you are done with the bucket setup awesome let me know in the comments and if you are enjoying this video so far don't forget to give it a thumbs up so now a great job now let's move on to the third step which is configuring route 53 because we want to set up this particular domain isn't it so go to the route 53 by searching here just type route you will get the option for route 53 now in order to do this we need to go to the hosted zones so on route 53 click on hosted zone and if you haven't watched the video on route 53 on the channel then please make sure that you do it because all the topics that we are seeing here all the content that we are seeing here are already discussed there on that particular video you will get more insight on why and how these things work so please make sure that you watch that video as well now here what we need to do is we need to create a hosted zone so once you click on hosted zone click on create hosted zone uh, for the domain name uh, type the domain name that you want to route your traffic for example like for myself it is pythol.cloud you can provide a description here as well this is leave the type as public hosted zone a public hosted zone determines how the traffic is routed on the internet so don't worry about that you already know how this works and now you can provide a tag that's optional and the next step is just to click on create hosted zone now the hosted zone is created so we get two types the ns record and the soa record and the routing is simple okay so once we have created this so after creating your uh, hosted zone amazon route 53 automatically creates a name server and a state of authority so a record for your domain so we'll need the values in the ns record later if you have to update the ns record for the domain so don't worry about this but these informations are very important so and the next step for us is to create a record set so click on create record here what you need to do is on the right hand side leave the name field blank to apply to the entire domain okay so for the subdomain that you see here and once you have left the record name is blank the second option for us is the record type so here you can just choose a a record which actually routes traffic to an ipv4 address and some aws resources this is fine for us and the next important option here is for us to have an alias so click on this or check this alias mark here or the radio button or what we can say this is a switcher so this switch you can just turn it on and here you can see we have a choose endpoint so now what you can do is you can go down and see alias to s3 website endpoint so click on this and you can just choose the region that you want so for me it was ap south one and you can enter the s3 endpoint so this is s3 website ap south one amazon aws.com pythol.cloud and the routing will be simple and uh, you can disable or enable evaluate health check or the target health so if we want to just reiterate through once again so for the record what we are doing is why we are creating this record is because we want aws or the internet to know what endpoint we are trying to access and where it should be redirected to and for that we need a record so that our dns server can visualize that okay if this user is trying to hit this particular website name where it should be pointed to because the content is not on pytholy.cloud the content is on the s3 static website so we need to have a we need to have a information for the server to identify where this traffic has to be routed now uh, we have uh, left this blank because I want this to stay at uh, pythol.cloud. The record type is A record. So the traffic routes to an IPv4 address. And the alias is S3 website endpoint. I have provided the region, Mumbai region, AP South 1. And the S3 website endpoint is pythol.cloud. 
pythonly.cloud, which is S3 website, episode one, Amazon AWS.com. Now, the final step for us is to create the record. So just click on create record. Okay, so now we have created a record called pythonly.cloud. The, ty the type is A, the routing is simple, alias is yes, and the traffic is redirected to this particular S3 website. Now, the AWS part is done. And for us to actually view this website, we have to make some changes on the domain registrar side. So let's go to hostingon.com where I have already purchased the domain pythology.cloud and let's make some changes there in order for us to view the website. And before leaving AWS, what you need to do is you need to just copy, make a note of these four NS records and uh, name server records. And that's what we will need it later on. So just copy it and place it somewhere safe. We'll be needing it on the hosting site. So here I have logged into my domain registrar's website and this is where I have all my hosting plans. And here I have already purchased the domain pythol.cloud. So I can just click on manage here. You will also see this if you have a, if you have already purchased it. So don't worry about it. And this will be similar for you if you're using Hostinger. And if you are not using Hostinger, then there'll be similar settings to this as well, because the basic of uh, launching a website and hosting it on the internet remains the same and just the names or uh, the way it is presented on the ui will be different but uh, everything else re should remain same so don't worry about it so we have two domains here now i'll just click on manage here we have pythol.cloud's domain dashboard so you will see all the domain information here but for us the most important setting is the dns setting so just click on dns slash name service the most important part for us is the name servers that are mentioned here. So name server handle internet requests for your domain. You can use hosting a name or you can use custom name servers to point to other hosting providers. So now AWS is something that we want to use. So we can just change these name servers to the ones that we already have. So click on change name server. Use hosting a name servers that is recommended or you can just click on change name servers and you can point to the four that we already copied. So here I can, what I can do is this is the information that I need here. I can just go ahead and copy these things here. You might have a doubt like why this AWS DNS has a dot at the end, but the DNS that we had for the hosting does not have because it is already .com, but there is no trailing dots here. So this information is also very important. So the trailing dot in a DNS name is used to denote the absolute or fully qualified path of the domain name in question. So it essentially indicates that this is a full domain name, not relative to any other domain name. For instance, considering a domain name ns1500.awsdns-59.org. So the trailing dot that you see indicates that this is a full domain name starting from the root dot. Without the trailing dot, the domain name could potentially be considered relative, which might be an issue in some contexts but however in practice uh, especially when configuring dns records such as ns records whether or not you include the trailing dot usually does not matter because the dns software typically understands that these entries should be fully qualified domain names and interprets them as such so when you see the trailing dots in the route 53 console for ns records it's just indicating that these are fully qualified domain names so these are just fully qualified domain names. When you are entering these into any other system, you can typically leave the trailing dots off if the interface does not accept it or it should just work fine. So don't worry about it. The most important part for us is to save the changes. Just save it. Okay, so it is not allowing me. So let's remove these. Okay, so if it allowed me, then I can use it. Now, if it is not allowing me, then I can remove it. Now just save it. Here you can see your name servers have been changed or has been changed. So now it might take up to 24 hours for the domain to propagate to the new name server. So you might have to wait for it. So there are many reasons why this actually happens. So the first reason could be caching. So DNS records are cached or temporarily stored at multiple levels on the internet, including your own computer, your router, your internet service provider and other DNS servers around the world. So this is done to improve the speed of DNS lookups and reduce the load on the DNS server. So this also has an impact. The second option or the second reason could be time to live or the TTL. So each DNS record has a TTL value. 
which tells systems how long they should be cached or how long they should cache the record before checking for a new one. So if the TTL is set to a larger value, then it might take some time for all the systems that have cached the record to check. So that also is a reason. And the third one is basically propagation. So to update or the updated DNS records have to be sent to all DNS servers around the world. Because the internet is a vast network, it can take some time for every server to receive the update. And this 24 hours or 48 hours window is generally worst case scenario. So often you may find that DNS changes propagate much quickly within a few hours itself. But it is important to be aware that it can potentially take up to 48 hours for changes to fully propagate worldwide. And let's see if it has propagated. Oh, well, this has just taken place in just like less than I think less than five to 10 minutes. So that's a very good thing for us. See, now this is hosted on Python.cloud. I have a static website hosted using my custom domain that is pythal.cloud. So that's a very interesting thing, isn't it? And that's what I wanted to tell you that these things might be simple, but there are steps that might be a bit complicated, but you must understand that that's how we learn things. And now that we have hosted our website and we have our very own custom URL in place, the next step for us is to create our SSL TSL certificate because we want that HTTPS mark on the website, isn't it? So let's see how we can do that. So now, as you can see, it is saying that it is not secure. Your connection to this site is not secure. This is something that we need to be very careful about. So for this, what we are going to do is to make this site secure. We have to first create a SSL TLS certificate. So let's go and do that. So we have to go to AWS certificate manager. So this is the AWS certificate manager. Just click on this. So you can see here provision, manage and deploy SSL TSL certificates. Just click on this. And remember all these things that I'm doing right now, as a cost. I am doing this just to show you how it can be done because most of the people had asked me for this and uh, I am doing this just to show you. But remember, if you do these things on AWS, on your free tier account, you have to remove them as soon as you, uh, what do you say, perform these operations. So just click on request a certificate. So this certificate is a public certificate. So request a public certificate. Uh, so here what we are doing is request a public SSL TSL certificate from Amazon. By default, public certificates are trusted by browsers and operating systems. So our part of getting the trust is done. So we have to just create a certificate here. Now, once I request for a public certificate, in order to do that, I just need to click on next, add the fully qualified domain name, pytholic.cloud. You can add another name for your certificate, but I am not going to do that. And the validation method, choose DNS validation, which is recommended. Choose this option if you are authorized to modify DNS configuration for the domain in your certificate request. Yes, we are going to do that. Now, choose RSA 248. Here, there's the key algorithm. And uh, I'll just click on request. Okay, just refresh this. Now, the status for this is pending validation. So, we have to validate this. So how to validate this? We can just click on this certificate ID. Here you can see all the information again, like certificate status, which is pending validation. You come to domain. This is also pending validation. So, first, so the first thing that we have to do is if, if the DNS has been created from our route 53, we have to create a record for this particular domain. So now if to, in order to validate this, we have to create record in route 53. So with, here is the option. You can just click on create record and here, you can see the domain name, validation status, pending validation, and the CNAME value, or sorry, name and the value. So this is something that is really important. And remember, North Virginia, US East 1 is the region that you should create your certificate. Otherwise, it will not be able to create the CloudFront distribution or will not be able to use this in the CloudFront distribution. So now create the record. So once you've created the record, if you go back to Route 53 and refresh this, it would have created a entry of CNAME record. Now let's go back here. Now it is issued. So the status has changed to issued. Okay, so I hope you have created your certificate. Now it's time for us to use the power of CDN or content delivery network and make our site secure using the certificate we created. For that, we need to create a CloudFront distribution. So let's do that. 
and now once we are done with this the next important part for us is to create the cloudfront distribution and for that we need to go to cloudfront so once you type cloudfront here you can see the option just right click on this and open it in a new tab now here just click on create a cloudfront distribution now here i am going to choose the aws origin or enter your origins domain name so this is the amazon s3 uh, domain that I have so I'll just click on this and once you select this uh, it will show you this s3 bucket has static website enabled if you plan to use this distribution as a website we recommend using the s3 website endpoint rather than the bucket endpoint so let's use the website endpoint so this is the website endpoint now here uh, the port number that we have here is http only the origin path is okay L leave it as it is here we have name enter a name for this origin so i'll give pytholic.cloud here are additional settings like connection attempt connection timeout response timeout i'm not going to change these settings now once you're done with these the next important thing for us is to choose redirect http to https so this is one of the viewer policy viewer protocol policy that we have to use and you can just use get head or get option or this one so this doesn't matter for now for us we need to just have the get operation we're just trying to fetch this and restrict viewer access so if you restrict viewer access viewers must use cloudfront sign url or cookies to access your content so i don't want that so i'll just keep no cache key or origin request i don't want to cache any keys or origin request function association also is not important the next important for us is this one the price class so choose the price class associated with the maximum price that you want to pay so use all edge location you can do that or else you can choose use north america europe asia middle east and africa so this is also fine you can choose it uh, based on your requirement i'll just choose this use all edge location for now just to test this so now you can add alternate domain name c name optional so for this what we have to do is we have to add additional c names so additional c names in the sense we have to add our domain names itself so add item so it will be either www.pytholic.cloud and and it could be pytholic.com dot cloud sorry not dot com dot cloud okay so these two are fine for me and the best part that we have done is like the step that we had done for uh, hosting the static website was to have the bucket name as same as this particular domain name so that is how it is important for us to keep those things constant because otherwise we'll get confused and we'll forget which one to add where so that's something that we have to remember now we have to choose the most important thing here is to choose the custom sl just refresh this and you can see the certificate id here just select this legacy client support 600 dollars per month we don't need this <laughs> and the next option that we have is tls uh, 1.2 2021 that is recommended so just don't um, choose anything else just keep it as it is you have supported http is http slash 2 or you can use for standardization of uh, http slash 3 as well but that is not a problem don't worry about it you can also have a standard logging so get logs of your request delivered to an amazon s3 bucket you you can have it if you want a ibv6 support you can have it otherwise you can just disable it I, I will just keep it as it is not a problem so the first thing that we have to do is we have to provide the origin name we have to provide the name of this origin uh, we have to choose the do origin domain name then we have to provide the name of the origin then we have to check the viewer policy to redirect http to https allowed http methods are get and head and uh, here if you go down you will see the settings and i am currently using use all edge location for best performance so that's what i am going to choose right now and uh, here you have to choose the custom ssl that we have created so that is public uh, pythology.cloud and this is the id so 823505 if you go back to acm you can see this is the same identifier so we are done let's create the distribution so this is one of the important things that we had to choose web application firewall i don't want that so let's not do it just click on create distribution okay yeah i had removed it right so just just let, let us just remove it 
now again click on create account so you got the point right www.pythology.cloud was not in my acm certificate here so this domain is not present here that is why it was telling me that uh, you have to remove it so previously i had added it i forgot to remove it so i'll just come back here and i'll i had removed it from this alternate name section and now i'll go down and i'll create the distribution yes it has successfully created so it always takes a few minutes or few hours to basically propagate because if you see the last modified status is deploying right now so this is the distribution name and this is the distribution url or the arn so once it is deployed this is the one that we needed so the next important thing for us is to go to route 53 and change the record that we are trying to point to so here the a record that we had pytholic cloud so this is the simple routing policy and this is the one that it was currently routing it to isn't it so here we have to just click, uh, click on this remember i am changing the type a record not ns or soa or c name the a record that we had created that is what we are going to change so now what we have to do is we have to edit this record here it will remain as a record but now it will be alias to a cloud front distribution here just choose this and choose the pytholic.cloud or the one that you have df5zulzbtf83v.cloudfront.net and from where it is getting the value from here okay so this is the distribution domain name here we need to set it to that just choose it and then just click on save okay so this is the last setting that you need and this is the most important setting that you need because once the changes propagate your website should be accessible over https and the browsers will mark it as secure and this step is one of the most important steps that once you've created the distribution your website should actually basically route not to the s3 bucket itself again but to the cloudfront distribution because from there only we have set up the ssl certificate let's go to a website and see if it is working yes see the connection is now secure this site that you see here is a secure site and that's what you wanted isn't it since a long time you guys have been telling me to show what exactly that i had missed and i wanted to show you guys that we can do this but there are a lot of steps involved so that is why i did not do it previously i just wanted to keep it simple but as you guys said that you want to know how it works so i just prepared this video so i hope you liked it